Greetings citizens of the interweb, it's Matt from Hydro Gaming here this week to present a new video showcasing our single player medieval fantasy RPG that we're creating using the power of the Unreal Engine. In today's episode, which is actually a remake of the original episode 2 from two years ago, which between you and me was absolutely unwatchable, we're covering the first step in the creation of our RPG titled Nightwatch. In episode 0 we covered the main idea for the game, and in episode 1 we went over some lore. This is the video where we actually start developing our very own RPG. So let's jump right in. Roll the intro. So at this point in development, we were covering the initial creation of our playable character and the in-game movement system. I really had no idea what I was doing here, and we ran into a lot of bugs that thankfully have fixed since then. If you want to see the original episode 2, you can watch the legacy playlist on my channel, but I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. Anyways, I started by creating a new character blueprint in the Unreal Engine. This character used the default 3D character asset for the engine, which kind of looks like a crash test dummy. By default, he doesn't really do anything but stand there, but we quickly add in lots of functionality that allows him to walk, jog, look around based on the direction of the camera, and even play idle animations. And don't worry, we'll eventually add things like jumping, crouching, climbing, parkour, and other movement states, but for now, things are looking pretty good. As far as character appearance goes, what good is an RPG if you can't create your very own character to roleplay as? This being the case, our character won't remain a crash test dummy for too long, but that's something we're going to cover in a later episode. If you don't want to wait that long, I suggest jumping all the way over to episode 21 in the series, where you can see our updated character model and all sorts of neat movement states like swimming and horse riding. But for now, we have a crash test dummy that can run around and I'm pretty happy with it. What good is the hero of Nightwatch if they can't even move? As I said before, we were able to remedy the problem of our ever still character. We did this by creating what is called an animation blueprint that works in tandem with our base character code to tell the character what animations to play. An example of this would be the code detecting that the player pushed the W key on their keyboard. Our base code would tell the character to move forward and relay a message to our animation blueprint to play a walking or running animation that fits whatever direction we happen to be moving. If you're one of the poor souls who had to watch the original episode 2 of this devlog series, then I'm sure you remember how this all worked out for our first ever Nightwatch playtest. It's pretty cringy, but I mean, our first ever playtest? This was Nightwatch history, so there's no way I was going to take it out of this video. Have a look for yourself. An adaptation to help fledgling birds learn to fly is that their first flight feathers are longer than adults. The result is more surface area on the wings, which increases lift and makes long flights easier. It also makes young birds just leaving the nest look bigger than their parents. After some trial and error, I finally got the character movement working the way I wanted it. It took a lot longer than a seasoned game developer would expect, but I was a complete novice at this time, so most things that would be obvious to other developers definitely weren't obvious to me. To be fair, they really still aren't that obvious, but we'll figure it out as we go. For now, let's jump to the next part of the video. You may have noticed that the movement system in our game doesn't look like most other RPGs such as Skyrim or Oblivion. That's because we use a system called Root Motion, whereas a lot of other games use In Place Motion. The difference here is that In Place Motion, like in Oblivion for example, just moves the character around on an axis while playing a generic walking or running animation. That's how you end up with the sliding during movement, like in the recently released Sonic Frontiers for example. I'm not trying to say anything bad about Sonic Frontiers, mind you, I haven't actually played it. This was just the best example I could think of off the top of my head. 
You can see that in Sonic Frontiers, when Sonic walks he just kinda slides across the ground and the speed of his walking animation doesn't really match up with how fast he's moving. Root Motion, on the other hand, moves what's called the root of the character, hence the name. For our purposes, the character will only move when their foot hits the ground, just like in real life. The idea is that our blueprint will tell the game engine every time our character takes a step, and will move the character forward at a distance and speed that matches the animation. So let's look at that Sonic animation one more time. Now let's compare that with how Root Motion looks. You can see that you end up with a much more organic and realistic feeling character movement. Fun fact, this is actually how our game looks two years later. This specific footage is from episode 21 if you want to go take a look. Anyways, moving back to this version of our Nightwatch project, this is what we end up with. For now it looks pretty good, but we'll mess with it a little bit more here and there as we make our way through the series. In future episodes, we're going to cover lots of cool stuff like character creation, NPCs, combat, the open world environment, swimming and underwater gameplay, our mount riding system, and so much more, so stay tuned. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nightwatch A Journey, and we'll see you in the next episode where we create our parkour system. If you found any of this entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing, dropping a like, and commenting down below something you'd love to see added to the game. If your idea gets selected, not only will you receive a shout-out, but I'll name either an NPC or a weapon in the game after you. Anyways, until next time, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.